This is lesson three. Today we will review what we learned so far. Uh, we will learn about while loops and for loops. Uh, we will also learn about importing packages and uh, among the possible packages we will look into time and random packages. And the project for today will be the number skip game. Okay, so we've already went through two lessons and we learned a lot of stuff. So I think we need to review what we have learned so far. Uh, first, there was the int and string objects. And there are two types of variables. Uh, some are numbers and some are strings and they behave differently, okay? And uh, you also have uh, functions to convert between one to the other. Uh, we also learned how to slice a string. For example, a name with the bracket, colon four gives you the first four letters. Uh, I talked about how you can use dir function to find out all available methods of a string or sometimes numbers and other objects. And uh, when we did the dir, we looked at various commands that came up and uh, we looked a few. Uh, for example, name.strip gets rid of white spaces, name.lower converts to lowercase. Uh, in the first lesson, we also learned about the F strings. It's cool because we can uh, replace part of the text by the value of the variable. So, uh, for example, if you had the name as Daniel, then uh, putting this F will fetch the value in the name variable, which will be the Daniel, and it will uh, render as nice to meet you, Daniel. Okay. And then we also learned about the conditionals, if, l, if, else. And we also learned about what indentation means in Python. Uh, and uh, especially when it comes to if, l, if, else, indentation is really important. And uh, along with that, we learned the concept of code blocks. And we also did the input. So if any of these things uh, don't sound familiar to you, then you should review the lesson one and two before we go on to today's lesson, okay? All right, so the new stuff, actually this is the part where a lot of people get confused and they give up. And uh, I think you will need uh, a lot of time and effort to learn what loops are, okay? So, you know, people use computer programming so that they can automate the boring stuff and automating uh, usually involves repeating things like uh, if you do something over and over again why not make the computer do it automatically right so there must be a computer command in any computer language to repeat repeat things and these things that you repeat are called loops and just like the if statement uh, there's something called a while loop and what it does is uh, if you put while with some condition and then you put these uh, block of code uh, I explained that you you have to indent to have a block of code so this indented block of code will be repeated as long as the condition is true so uh, you just keep repeating things repeating things and then when condition is no longer true then it stops and uh, the unindented part of the code which is outside the loop will be executed. Okay, so this is the general idea but let me show you a few examples and then hopefully you'll get it. But uh, don't be discouraged if this one suddenly becomes harder than the other ones because uh, indeed this is a stumbling block for a lot of people, okay? All right, so let's go to the Repolit or any other uh, editor that you use, Spider or PyCharm, th those are good. But let me first talk about variables again. So uh, I said if you have AAA equals to 1, that means AAA is 1, right? Uh, now let me show you this. AA equals to AAA plus 1. Now this looks very strange if you're doing math. If this was a mathematical equation, the answer would be that there is no such variable that would satisfy this. Nothing is same as one plus itself. However, as I explained, equal sign is not the mathematical equal 
in Python, the mathematical equal requires two equal signs, right? So since you only have one equal sign, uh, this actually in Python means a sign. So what it's supposed to be doing is you, you compute the right side, AAA plus 1, you compute this right side, and the value of that will be assigned to A, AAA. So let's think about what happens on the right side. So AAA is equal to 1, right? But 1 plus 1 is 2. So 2 gets recorded into the variable AAA. So let's see what we get. AAA, we get 2, right? Now, uh, up arrow brings the previous command. Uh, so I put the up arrow twice. And I'm going to execute this again. And let's see what that is. Oh, now AAA is 3. Because when we executed this for the second time, the value of AAA became 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3, and 3 gets recorded in AAA. So that's why you get 3. Okay. Uh, now, there is also a shortcut for doing this. Uh, the shortcut for saying the same thing here, uh, which is actually a little easier to grasp for a lot of people, which is to say AAA plus equals to 1. That means you take the value of AAA and you increase it by 1. That's what it means. Okay, so if I look at AAA, now it's 4. You can also increase by uh, some bigger number like 7. 7 plus 4 would be 11. So if I ask what's AAA, it's going to say 11. Also, you can add minus if you want to. So uh, you, you can subtract if you want to. So you can do AAA minus equals to 5 and then that gives you 6 because 11 minus 5 is 6 and you can even multiply or divide all of those are possible uh, times equals to 2 that will make AAA twice AAA divide equals to 3 and AAA will be equals to 4 right okay um, so let's clear, control L clears the screen. So this is what I want to do. I want to start with num equals to one, so number is equal to one. And I want to have something to print numbers starting from one and until 10. So it's like counting until 10, okay? So how do you make Python to print from 1 through 10. Well, of course, the easy way is to just say print 1, print 2. Yeah, but uh, that will be, that will become harder if you wanted to make Python do 100 or 1000. That's just uh, almost impossible to write print 1 through 1000, just typing each line. So that's when we use the loops. Okay, so let me sh show you the loops. So while the number is less than 11, colon, just like how you use the if command, right? So you do this, and then the editor automatically uh, has two, two spaces, so it's indentation, so this is an indentation block. And I want to print the number And then uh, I want to increase num by 1 plus equals to 1, right? And then print yay, okay? Or you can even print before, print I can count to 10, right? And the number is 1 while the number is less than 11 uh, you keep adding uh, and print yay so let me first execute this and i'll try to explain this again okay so let's see what this does okay i can count to 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 yay okay all right uh, so you see this four and five is an indented block of code and that's the thing that will 
be repeated as long as num has the values less than 11. Okay, so let's see what that means. So the very first value of num is 1, right? And then Python is trying to understand this, right? So it, it goes to this next line and sees that, oh, it's a while command. That means I have to prepare to repeat things, okay? And first, it looks at the value of num. 1 is indeed less than 11, right? So if this condition, since this condition is met, then it's going to print num, so that 1 is going to be printed, right? And then what happens to num? 1 is the value of num and you increase that by 1 so what you get is 2 and then with that value of 2 it comes back to this 3 to check whether the condition is still met okay. so that's a lot of thinking for such short lines but uh, you see the trouble with loops being hard is that you really need to think along just like the computer, okay? If you uh, just read like a human, you don't understand what's going on. But if you think like the computer, uh, you have to go through each one of them uh, rather uh, like foolishly, maybe, yeah. So, okay, so where are we? Uh, NUM became two, so two is here, two is less than 11. So it's still met, that means we still get to execute this so print 2 2 is printed 2 is now increased to 3 you go back up 3 is still less than 11 this is still printed add 1 now it's 4 4 is less than 11 print 4 add 1 that's 5 5 is less than 11 print 5 5 plus 1 is 6 6 is less than 11 so it, it, it just repeats and repeats until number becomes 10 and 10 gets printed but then 10 is increased by 11. Is 11 less than 11? No, 11 is equal to 11, right? So this is no longer true when N NUM has the value of 11, and therefore it escapes this loop. It no longer executes this lines four and five and goes to the next one and it prints yay. Okay, all right, so, uh, I urge you to repeat this part of the video if you had trouble understanding that, okay? Because it's really important and it's probably the toughest part of learning a language, learning loops. I mean, certainly for me, when I first learned uh, basic pro programming language, loops were the hardest. Uh, but once I learned what loops were, uh, when I understood the loops, then everything else became a lot easier. So I hope you, you understand this, okay? Now, uh, just to give you something more to think, think about what's going to happen if I indent the print as well. So now print is part of the block of the code. What's going to happen uh, if I run this? Okay, so stop the video, think what's going to happen and see if it agrees with what actually happens. So I'm gonna run. What happened? Because yay is now part of the repeating part of the the repeating block of code. Uh, this gets executed every time uh, this while condition is met. So yay is going to be printed ten times, right? So it prints one. Now num is increased to two, and then prints yay, and goes up. Two is less than eleven, so it prints two. Num is increased to three, then it prints yay. Okay, so that's what while loops do. Okay, all right. So let me go back. Uh, here is a very interesting uh, thing to implement uh, in Python once you know loops. So uh, this is actually a, a song. It's called a sea shanty. Uh, actually, I think it's better to look at the Wikipedia uh, article. So uh, we have it pulled here. So uh, 99 bottles of beer is an anonymous sea shanty dating until mid-20th century. 
uh, it's traditional reverse counting song in both the United States and Canada okay and it, it has the actual notes here it goes like 99 bottles of beer on the wall 99 bottles of beer take one down and pass it around 98 bottles of beer on the wall that's how it works okay so that one uh, you can kind of see how we can use the loop to do this so we can track the number of beer to start with 99 so num instead of starting from one it's going to be 99 and then uh, that same thing is going to be printed but then uh, we are going to decrease the value of num and then after that we will print take one down pass it around 98 bottles of beer okay and then uh, 98 bottles of beer on the wall 98 bottles of beer take one down passing around 97 bottles of beer okay so there will be uh, a place where we decrease the number and just uh, prints the next one and so on and so on okay so let's try to make this into a Python code okay so let's print the song 99 bottles of beer okay and you start with 99 oh by the way uh, when you get to one you can't say one bottles of beer so uh, you want to continue this until it hits uh, two oh maybe three Okay, we'll, we'll think about that. Okay, so let's say three. Okay, and then uh, we have to use the the f strings f and num bottles of beer. Oh, we should have this as lowercase bottles of beer on the wall. The wall. Be careful about the double quotation and then uh, 99 bottles of beer on the wall 99 bottles of beer so you don't need this you just need to stop do this and make sure that both of these are indented because if it's not indented then uh, it's not part of the repeating block and you're in trouble okay and then we subtract one so minus equal to one you can also do plus of negative one adding a negative one the same as subtracting one right okay and then uh, what was the lyrics uh, take one down passing around 98 bottles of beer on the wall okay so let's do that print take one down pass it around right and then you print uh, do you see that I didn't use F string here because there's no variable to put but the next one now I have to say 98 uh, actually it's the same thing as this one right but it will be different because I've subtracted one so be like this. So, 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 98, 99 but beer, bottles of beer, and then you subtract one, take one down, pass it around, and now it's going to be 98. So 98 bottles of beer on the wall. Yeah, on the wall. Okay. All right. So that goes on, and let's not do this one for now. Let's see what this gives us, and we'll we'll think about changing things. So let's print, uh, let's run. Okay, sometimes uh, one of the trouble with, okay, it worked, okay, good. Yeah, so uh, some trouble with the uh, replit is sometimes they, they hang. In that case, just copy this, and then you just reload, 
and then you can uh, you can restart the entire shell okay all right uh, anyways uh, here we have okay so you have four bottles of beer on the wall four bottles of beer take one down pass it around three bottles of beer on the wall uh, three bottles of beer on the wall oh, okay I, sh I think the next one is okay two is okay now I see that I want to do something more uh, I want an extra space after this is all printed so that uh, extra line so after four bottles of beer on the wall I want uh, an extra space so to make that happen what I can do is just put an empty print then it's just going to uh, print an extra line so let's see what that gives us run it okay that's a lot easier right so three bottles of beer on the wall, three bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, two bottles of beer on the wall, okay? And then once everything is done, now you have to print uh, two bottles of beer on the wall. Yeah, here we're just going to not rely on the loops. Uh, Actually, there's the Wikipedia. If you go back to the Wikipedia page, they have a better version than what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible, but you can use if if then statements to make this somewhat better. Uh, okay, uh, and then we print take one down, pass it around. Same thing here, and then uh, the next one will be one bottle of beer on the wall. Okay, that's all we need to be one bottle. Up here on the oh and then we learned about multi-line strings right so we can actually just do everything at once by doing one two three uh, that's going to give us multi-line strings oh by the way I want a blank print statement here so that it, it will give you an extra line and uh, uh, how does this end uh, let's see Oh, okay. Uh, no more bottles of beer on the wall. No more bottles of beer. Go to the store and buy some more. Okay, so that's that's after that. So uh, we will do one bottle of beer on the wall. And then one bottle of beer. And then take one down, pass it around. This is multi-line string because I'm using three quotes. Okay. And then no more bottles uh, of beer on the wall. And you still need to close with three. Exactly three. Okay. Okay. And then we want to print. Sounds like a lot of typing to do, but if you do Control C to copy and Control V, then it, it works better. Okay, uh, and let's just copy this one from Wikipedia. Uh, I'll just put it here. Okay, no more bottles of beer. Okay, I think I guess here. No more bottles of beer. Go to the store and buy some more nine bottles of beer on the wall. Okay, good, good. So. Let's run it. Okay. So that's it. Uh, 99 bottles of beer. Uh, one thing I want to change in this one is that, uh, see, this is a lyric and it's like a song which should be printed line by line. Okay. So you some might want the Python to pause after each print and to do that the native Python doesn't know how to do it so you have to use some package other people wrote so uh, there's something called the time package and it has something called time.sleep which 
weights okay you can also measure time it, it can tell you what time it is and how long some process took in executing but uh, the main thing we're going to use for, from time will be this time that sleep it makes Python put to pause so let me show you uh, let me first use this right side to import time and let me s let's see what happens here uh, dir time and you can see that there are a lot of things here uh, let's see time dot there's something called time right so time dot time okay it gives you some some uh, number here and this is actually uh, time in seconds measured from was it sometime in 1970 or something so you have to convert this into uh, date or something uh, yeah I don't know how to use that specifically but the important thing is time dot there's this thing called sleep right so I'm going to use that time dot sleep and here I'm going to put five and um, let's just say three okay so for three two one it doesn't do anything and then it, it gives you back the next command right so this is what we are going to use uh, time to sleep with three means you sleep for three seconds but that's going to be too long so what we're going to do is something like time that sleep 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 seconds seems to be uh, a nice thing. Okay, so I'm going to import time, and it's you, it usually uh, you want to put the import statements in the very beginning of the code because uh, if somebody is trying to use your code, they have to know exactly what kind of packages are required. Some of the packages come with Python, so you don't have to install them, but there are some other ones that if you want to use, you have to know how to install them, and that takes time. So uh, usually you want to put the import statements in the very beginning. And uh, what you want to do here is right after uh, 99 bottles of beer on the wall, you want to do time.sleep 0.2. And you just copy this and put it after each print statements right so just put this after each print this one is just uh, changing lines so I don't care yeah I don't put time that sleep but otherwise anytime you have a print statement you can put it here oh that that makes me regret that I used multi-line strings because uh, this one I can't wait for each line it just prints everything at once but it's okay I'll just leave with it okay so let's do that let's run it now let's see what happens All right so it doesn't give you everything at once now I think 0 0.2 might be a, a little too short but it depends. I mean, if you really want th these lyrics to go with the song, then you might want to change time that sleep to even something bigger. But it's doing what I think it should be doing. Okay. All right. Uh, to stop something that's too long, you can do Control C, and that that will halt the program. It's keyboard interrupt. So that's where we are. Okay. Uh, Now, I want to show you the second kind of loop called the for loop. And actually, because it's like a shorthand for the while loop in a lot of cases, although there, there are differences in the usage. Uh, in Python, actually, uh, for loop is used along with uh, lists or dictionaries, but we haven't gone to uh, lists or dictionaries yet. Uh, so the one that I want to show you is this way for I in range start end, and then step okay 
and uh, it's just like the while loop except that you don't have to put the the uh, value before and after it you, you just put all the values here so let me show you how you can change this previous code using the for loop so instead of saying starting with 99 and you stop right before 2 what you say is uh, you delete this line and say it the for for uh, num because num is the, the value that's changing for num in range and then it starts with 99 right and it ends right before 2 and every time you move you subtract 1 right so that's what happens and this line can now be deleted and moreover this num plus equals to negative 1 should also be deleted you have to delete it because th it's done right here okay so this what I wrote is like a shorthand for the previous program okay and that's nice because uh, it's less lines right so that's why for loops are actually used more than while loops uh, there's less to type uh, a lot of times if you use the for loop uh, you save like one or two more lines and that's actually more convenient of course there are other very convenient uses of for loops but then uh, but for those uh, we will go over when we learn Python lists okay all right uh, so let's run it I'll show you it's exactly the same thing right behaves just like this because for loops in this written in this way is just a shorthand for the while loop okay I hope uh, that was understandable it was easy enough but you know as I said loops are very hard so if you have any trouble with learning this one uh, you can watch some other videos on YouTube or review this video again but take more time to learn loops even if you had uh, no problem at all learning all the material so far uh, once you get to loops sometimes it is confusing okay all right so now let me talk about oh, oh there's something called pass continue and break uh, sometimes you want to just uh, not do anything uh, it's hard to see when, when that's possible but you can just do pass that just doesn't do anything and uh, sometimes you want to skip the other parts and just continue and sometimes you just want to break out of the loop okay so here's an example of usage of the pass continue and break um, now this this is slightly different than the previous usage of the for if you just put one number here that same as 0 10 and 1 okay you start from 0 you stop right before 10 so it's like while num less than 10 okay and then uh, you since you didn't provide anything it just increases by one okay if you put two numbers that means it's the beginning and the end and the step size is one okay if you put three numbers the last number is the step size okay all right <clears throat> so that's how you use the for loop this just means i starts from zero and it ends at nine zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and then then after that this loop does not do anything okay okay however this is more complicated because uh, if I is less than 5 so if I is 0 1 2 3 4 uh, you don't do anything in this here you just don't do anything but there's a print so it prints 0 1 2 3 4 without any problem however if I is equal to 5 it's going to pre pr uh, print it's 5 okay and uh, see because we did continue 5 won't be printed here but instead it's 5 will be printed so it'll be like 0 1 2 3 4 it's 5 is the next line 
and then uh, and then it'll continue and then here uh, else uh, if it's not less than 5 nor is equal to 5 which means when it's 6 or anything afterwards then you break you break out of the loop so this loop even though it says we should be repeating this for 10 until I reaches right before 10 which is 9 uh, it actually skips the rest of the part and then stops okay so the output of this will be 0 1 2 3 4 now let me give you a quick demonstration but uh, you know this is actually even harder so uh, even if you didn't understand this part it's okay okay just see how it is I am going to be using one of them the continue one today and uh, then I'm going to explain the continue again but often when you have to use the pass or break it's a very complicated situation so uh, you're not going to be seeing that seeing it that much okay uh, so let me go to here control L and let me just quickly do it over here rather than the editor so for I in range 10 and uh, two spaces uh, if I is less than 5 then two spaces and because now you need a code block under if and if itself is indented twice uh, indented two spaces you need another two spaces one two and then we do pass okay and then two spaces L if I is equal to 5 this is the mathematical equal it tests if two sides are equal then you print again you need four spaces print it's 5 two spaces else four spaces break and then two spaces print I okay and then let me execute oh uh, okay somehow this is not supposed to happen oh, oh right 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 this this does 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 happen okay oh I forgot to do the continue that's why I should have done continue here okay uh, let me do it again here here this one here okay here I need to put the continue I forgot about that and then else break and then print I okay see what happened uh, 0 1 2 3 4 it's 5 and because it sees this continue it skipped this print and just went straight up to the very first one okay so continue skips the rest of the code and comes back to the beginning of the repetition okay all right so uh, <clears throat> next topic actually we've learned a lot of things today uh, and this will actually be the last thing before our uh, main project okay all right so um, there are some special characters that you can include in the print and uh, this backslash T means tab backslash N means new line backslash R means return to the beginning it's like the home key in your keyboard and slash B means backspace you go back and because every one of these uses backspace if you just put backspace the it's, it's a reserved thing so you need to put backspace twice backslash I mean 
two backslashes in order to create one single backslash okay so backslash T means tab so let's try this one print a b c t d r e okay so what does that do l print a b c backslash t d r e okay so let's see what this does a b c and then tab uh, creates either two spaces or four spaces depending on your uh, Python version and then it prints D but then R returns to the very beginning of the the thing and replaces this A by E so let's see you see what happened A B C oh the tab in this case only created one space hmm okay but uh, depending on your version, you're, you're probably going to see two spaces or even four. Prints D, and then it doesn't print E because I did backslash R, which returns the entire thing into the very beginning and prints it right there. Okay. All right. How about the other one? Uh, oh, oh. Then there's also another thing called end and flush. So let me show you that one. Uh, see if you if you do print here something and then it gives you this entire <coughs> explanation of how to use the print right uh, separation you don't need to know this uh, end is default is new line and then file you can write to file and there's something called a flush equals to false. Uh, we will talk about this later. Okay, but it, the print actually has lots of other options. Okay, so that that keep that in mind. And uh, so let me show you what happens if I do print. Uh, by the way, if you actually want to put multi lines. Uh, uh, let's do print ABC and then comma end equals to nothing then what happens is that ABC is printed and the new line is not given so you're at the same level as ABC uh, if I do print ABC with backslash R, what happens is that it will print ABC, but the cursor and the space overwrote the A and B. And now you, you can write over it. Okay. okay so uh, let me give some final touches here. I just wanted to to save this uh, before we go on see we needed new lines right so w one thing I want to do is put a new line right after the title uh, I didn't like that okay and then I should probably do time.sleep as well okay and then instead of print just to give you a new line you can use the backslash n and uh, <clears throat> for this one uh, this print you can also use the backslash n now let's see what happens oh there's a typo here let's run it Okay, you can see there's a uh, new line because of backslash n, and these backslash n will create new lines. Okay. All right, so I like this program, so I'm gonna just uh, leave this, uh, save this as whatever. Uh, okay, and we will now begin the the new game. Okay, so it will be 
the main project. Okay, so it's time for the main project. Uh, so number skip game, number skip game. Okay. So what does it do? Well, uh, the number skip game uh, is a program where the computer will count from 1 through 20 but we'll skip a number. And uh, the main question is, can you pick out the skipped number? And it's a game of concentration, okay? All right, so let's see how that one works. So I'll start with the number to skip. And let's say we skip nine, okay? And what we want to do is uh, explain, right? I am going to count from 1 to 20, skipping a number. Can you figure out what number I skipped? Okay, that's the question. And then I have to print 1 through 20, skipping 9, okay? So let's say 4, I in range. Well, if you want 1 through 20, you start from 1 and it ends right before 21. You do this and then you print I. something okay enter and then uh, actually we don't want to print I always uh, if I is same as the number to skip then what I want to do is I don't want this to be executed and that's when I use the continue okay so what it would do is it will continue and that means I skip this part and go back to the beginning so that number will be skipped okay and then uh, let's just run it and see how far we've come here so it's uh, 1 until 20 and you can see that 9 is skipped right and then you ask uh, so num equals to input what number did I skip okay and then if the number is equal to the number to skip this one right then print that is correct okay but if not print wrong I skipped well I guess I need a F string right wrong I skipped number to skip this one okay, okay. so that's it uh, well that's not it I, I'll still have to make this better uh, but so far this is what I have and I read this and say, oh, 9 is skipped, so I put 9. Okay, But that's not so interesting because, you know, uh, oh, something's not right. Uh, I did put 9, and it says wrong. Why? Because num is a string, number to skip is an integer. Uh, I explained this before, right? So you have to either convert the num into an integer or number to skip to a string. Let's change this to a string. So then it's going to work. 9, that is correct. Okay. All right. Now, the problem with this is you can always just look at it and see that 9 is missing, so it's no fun. So, what do we do? Well, that's when we use this elaborate print command, which is to replace this. Uh, we don't go to the new line, but we put the end as 
backslash r so that it just writes over the print previous one okay and if I run it it's gonna do uh, sometimes replit takes some time okay so let me see let's try to run it again okay uh, and now it didn't do anything at all right uh, where's the number? It didn't print. And the problem is this print just happened so quickly that uh, it didn't show what happened. So I need to use the time. So let's let's import time. And then right after the print, we're going to do time.sleep 0 0.2. Okay, so let's stop here. And let's run it again. You can see that it's doing that, right? Okay. Uh, and nine is correct. Okay. And uh, you know, I would do print ready and then time dot sleep. 0.5 okay. and then set and then go okay let's see what happens now Okay. Yeah, now it's challenging to see which one is skipped. Okay. All right. But then the problem is the the programmer knows what number to number is the answer. So uh, a hacker, when they can see the code, they're going to see oh the answer is nine, so it's no fun. Okay. So you want the computer to choose things, and that's when you import the random package. So let me talk about the random. Import random. DIR random gives you everything that random can do. Uh, and there's something called rand int here. So let me see. Random dot rand int. And the usage is you put 1, 20 and it will pick a random number between 1, th 1 through 20. So if you execute it, it gives you different different answers. So Sometimes it gives you 14, 5, 14, 15, 15, 14. Yeah, it does this. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's the random one. And uh, I don't like one to be chosen because I don't want 1 or 20 because it's harder to see. So let's choose a number between 2 through maybe 19 or e you might even just do 3 to 18 okay so this will be the number to skip okay so let's do that I am going to now change this one to import random and then once you have that I'm going to use random dot rand int and, uh, 3 to 18 uh, unlike the range, uh, this randint includes the last one. So 18 could be an answer, 3 could be an answer, but 1 or 2 or 19 and 20 are not chosen. Okay, So let's see if we can get this one right. Okay, Run. <sighs> Did you see it? I didn't see it. Uh, maybe was it 11? Ah, okay. <laughs> it's actually pre pretty hard. Uh, let's see. <sighs> Was it eight? No, we skipped three. Okay, I, I knew something something happens in the beginning. Okay, now uh, maybe the difficulty should be changed. Like zero point two is too much. Maybe zero point four. Uh, in that case, the the game might be too easy. Oh, I, I saw that six six was skipped. So let me do six. Uh, 
That is correct. Okay, great. Uh, so I think 0 0.4 is too long. Maybe 0 0.3 is just right. You can also change as you go. I think it was 16. Okay, that's that's a lot easier. Maybe 0 0.25. Okay, I'm having too much fun with this. Uh, Oh, I didn't concentrate. I okay. Maybe you did know. Okay, you skipped three. Okay. All right. So that's that's the game. Um, you might actually want to do a little bit more. So what you can do is you can repeat this entire thing uh, maybe five times. Okay. So uh, we will play five times. Okay. And then what you can do is you can do four uh, I uh, or repetition REP in range of 10. And the idea is to actually repeat everything here. Okay. Uh, but to repeat everything in here, uh, you need this to be all indented at once, right? And that's really hard. But then your editor, if you're using the spider or replit or PyCharm, uh, I think there's another editor called idle that comes with Python. I don't think it does this one, but if you uh, press tab and automatically everything is indented inside so that it, it now you can make this entire thing repeat 10 times. By the way, uh, this line here is created to show that this is an indented block. So this entire thing is under this repetition. So it's going to repeat 10 times. And by the way, this number to skip should, should be changing each time you play. So I need to put it right here. Oh, this is 5 times, not 10 times. And then uh, we should have a score. So score should be 0. And then every time it's correct, I'm going to add the score so that at the end you can print uh, f string your score is score out of five. All right, so I may have gone too quickly, but this is what I did. I put score, and then I added the score by increase the score by one point every time you got it correct, and then you get any score out of five. Okay. All right, so let's see how that one goes. Uh, okay, I think eighteen was the one that skipped. Okay, great. Seven. Ah. Okay, definitely nine. I lost concentration. Okay, I only got two out of five. Okay, so please try this one and tell me what score you got. Uh, don't cheat. <laughs> I have my time dot sleep at zero point two five. So uh, be honest. Okay. All right, that's everything. Uh, see you in lesson four.